tell it all what the Lord has done for us. We cannot tell it all what the Lord has done for us. We cannot tell it all. He saved us and washed in his blood. So we can shout hallelujah, we can shout hallelujah, we can shout praise the Lord. Father, we praise you, we bless you. We are grateful. All that you have done for us, we can't even stand here to tell it all. But indeed, we are grateful. Father, receive our thanks and praises this morning in the name of Jesus. Thank you for all the testimonies that were shared. Thank you for the ones we could not share. Thank you for the ones that you are perfecting. We got it God in Jesus' name. Lord, we know you to build the Alpha. Even as you have started this year with us, you will continue with us. You will be the end of it with us. You will perfect us as your people. And we will continually glorify your name in the precious name of Jesus. For the few minutes I want to share with your children, my father, speak to our hearts. Strengthen us to be there for you. Strengthen us to be your true ambassador. In the name of Jesus, glory be to you, my Father. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. Rather, because of want of time, and the fact that today is specially meant for testimonies, our message will be very short. However, I am trusting that the Holy Spirit will leave an impression in your heart and my heart in the name of Jesus. Quickly, let's read from Psalm 116. Psalm 116. And I will be reading from verses 12 to 19. Psalm 116. I'll be reading from verses 12 to 19. What can I offer the Lord for all he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and praise the Lord's name for saving me. I will keep my promises to the Lord in the presence of all his people. The Lord cares deeply when his loved ones die. O oh Lord, I am your servant. Yes, I am your servant, born into your household. You have freed me from my chains. Hallelujah. I will offer you a sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the house of the Lord, in the heart of Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Bible scholar believe that this psalm was composed probably written by Ezekiah. And we all know the story of Ezekiah, the king, who, when the Lord was about to take him home, turned to God and prayed. And the Bible recorded that the Lord God added additional 15 years to his age. So this song was believed that it was, I mean, the scholars believe that this psalm was written by him. But the question this morning is, how does this relate to you? How does it relate to me? I, for me as an individual, I always find it difficult to give gifts. Not because I do not know that giving gifts is good. But one of my problems is the fact that 
I am poor when it comes to quality assessment. Two, at times I feel like, what is the value of the gift I want to give to an individual that the person will really appreciate? Then at times, you know, there are times you want to give something to a person, you look, oh, this individual is so rich. Will he ever even value this? And that's when, that's why when most of the time the question comes, what shall I give? And this was the position of this psalmist here. What shall I give unto the Lord? This is a big question. And I want to believe many of us we do ask that question too. What shall I do in the house of God? What shall I do? Am I even able to preach? Am I able to sing? Am I able to do this? Am I able to do that? I mean, this is the position of many of us. But the psalmist was saying, what shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits toward me? And I want to believe we are all thinking in that direction too. That question ringing bell in our heart. Jesus Palace, what can we even give to God for all the benefits that we enjoy? I give all the glory to God for all the testimonies we have had. If we are here from now to live, there will be more to testify. However, even while we are struggling with what we can give, we will not be an ungrateful children. And I don't want you to be like me who struggles with giving gifts. Brother, I want to encourage us shortly. And if you follow that passage that we read, you discover that the answers are there in verse 13. The writer said, I will give myself to his salvation. Amen. I will give myself to his salvation. For you to be able to make that statement, it means you have accepted his salvation. Now, in return for that good question, you want to sow yourself into that salvation. Remember, he gave us that salvation first. And I want to bless the name of the Lord for as many of you that are hearing my voice who have accepted that salvation. And I'm still thanking God on behalf of those that are yet to take it because eventually you will have it. It is free. Jesus has paid for it, but you must accept it. Now that we we accept it or we have accepted it, we must give ourselves to it. What does that mean? It means we want to be so completely into the gospel. And this relates to the message we share briefly even during the New Year's Eve. When we are being encouraged that we must give God a space in our life. So we saw King Hezekiah, like I said, if you read from Isaiah 38 verses 1 to 5, how even after God has added more years to him, he began to praise God, he began to serve God more than ever before. And the same goes to us. Now that God has saved us, now that we have accepted the gift of salvation, it is time that we must begin to give back to him who has saved us. It is time we must begin to give back to that God who has saved us. And that was why he said that I will give back, I will give praise unto God for that cup of salvation, for that that he has done for us. This we must do. This we must do. If you have not been committed to your salvation, if you have been toying with it, if you are not seeing it as something very, very important. In fact, I, I consider it as the most important thing that can happen to a man here or not. We must begin to see it so. And in return, we must have to 
bring that message of salvation to someone. And it is my prayer, even as God has laid it in our heart as a church this year, we will do this. We have been praying to God, how he will guide us, how he will direct us to do it to the glory of his name. You will be part of it. I will be part of it in the name of Jesus. Amen. What shall I give unto the Lord? I shall give myself in receiving his salvation and I shall give myself in prayer and concern myself for the salvation of others. I remember sometimes, either last year or year before, in one of our vigil, some of you can testify, when we were asked to write the names of some people in our families that we know deserves to be saved, that we should continue to pray for them. We will do more of that this year. It not necessarily be in your family, it could be your place of work, your community, somebody you know that they must receive this cup of salvation, this gift of salvation. We have to do that. And it's my prayer as we do that, the Lord God Almighty will help us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And the psalmist went ahead and said, what shall I give unto the Lord? If you read in verse 16, he said, I shall give myself in service. Hallelujah. When our sister was giving the announcement this morning, I said, ah, glory be to God. Holy Spirit, you are always there to witness to what you are doing in the church. I never discussed with her that the church is in need of volunteers, but God knows that he's in need of people who serve in his church. So when she was giving the testimony, I said, oh, I mean, the, the announcement, I said, my father, glory be to your name that you have now shared this message even with your daughter. So the psalmist said, I shall give of myself to him. That's why he say in verse 16, he said, oh Lord, surely I am thy servant. I am thy servant, the son of thy handmaid. Thou hast loosened my bones. Since you have received the gift of salvation, the bones are loosed. It is time for us to serve him in return. Church of God, are we going to do that this year? It's a question. Answer it individually. I don't want anybody to raise up their hand. And if you answer it positively, the God that we serve will back us up and we will not fail him in the name of Jesus. And if you are struggling, to answer that question, I pray that the Holy Spirit will touch you and enlarge your heart, that you will truly see yourself as a servant of the Lord. It's a great occupation for us to say we are servant of God. I know many people have given me such appreciation to this, to be that it is when you are a pastor that you are a servant of God. No. And that's one thing we emphasize in Jesus Father. Once you are born again, you are a priest unto God. You have a duty in his kingdom. I have a duty in his kingdom. Yours may not be as a pastor. It could even be someone that helps in the church. It could be someone that goes out there to pick grocery for his brothers or sisters in Christ. We are all servants, and this is one thing we can give unto the Lord. I, I know that we all have a life to live, but it is time for us, brethren, to know that all that God has given us is to serve him. Your talents, your skill, your money, and many a times, the time he has given us, even though many of us will claim it is our time. The time he has given us, we must use it for him. You know, these are some of the things our sister was mentioning during the announcement. Your skill set, please let's bring it to the table. 
let's use it, let's use them to propagate the cause of the gospel. I know many people struggle with that too, because we felt, oh, I'm not being paid. Why should I give my time to that? It's only the pastors that are paid, which of course in many instances is a wrong assumption. But the fact that God has given you all of these talents, he is now saying, you are my servant, come and deploy them to work for me. His kingdom must be expanded. And we are the one that will do it. God helping you, God helping me, we will not fail him in the name of Jesus. And I want to ask, like I said, many of us will claim, oh, I don't have time. I have, my time is precious. My time is this. My time is that. Glory be to God, we are still alive. And like we sing, it is only the living that can serve you. If we go to the grave, which nobody is praying for, it's all over. But now that we have that breath of life, brethren, we must use it to serve him. What shall we give unto the Lord? We, we give our service. And it is my prayer that this shall be acceptable unto him in the name of Jesus. What shall we give unto the Lord? In that same passage that we read in verse 17, he said a sacrifice of thanksgiving. A sacrifice of thanksgiving. I, I, I always bless the name of the Lord. Many a times when I reflect on the vision of redeemed Christian Church of God, you will see the heart of God in all of this vision. If we cannot give thanks unto him for all that he's doing for us, what else can we give? I, I thank one of the, I thank the Lord for one of the testifier. When, when he realizes that he's a fortunate man, he's a blessed man to even have a wife, not just a wife, a wife that takes good care of him. When he realizes that, oh, so I am this fortunate that I even have children. When he realizes that these are precious gifts from him, we cannot but give thanks to God. It's, if this is all we can do, please do it. If you decide to keep your skill set, fine. If you decide to say it's your time, glory be to God. But please learn to give him thanks. And that is his command to us. He said, in all circumstances, in all situations, we must learn to give him thanks. As many of us that we key, even if only this is the only one you key into in those three things that we have mentioned, the Lord God will bless us more in the name of Jesus. And this is one thing I want us to remember. If you read about that Ezekiah story in Isaiah, he said if God could added more years unto him, which God did, he will serve him, he will pay his vows. And this is one thing we all do. We always tie our vows to when God do something. No, let's have a rethink. Let's tie our vows to what God has done for us. And you will see how God will begin to do more. It, when I was just growing the Lord, I, I, I was a victim of that mindset too. The Lord God heard me. I said, God, if you would do this for me, I would do this. And God did it. But that was amazing to me. Perhaps it's one of those things that really convicted me along the way. But what I'm telling us this morning is, I've grown beyond that now. And I want many of us to grow beyond that. Don't tie your vows to until God do this. Tie it to what God is doing and what he can do. And you will see the mighty hand of God moving. And when it's begin to move, learn to give him back thanks. As we do so this year, I pray 
that the Lord God of heaven and earth that we serve will bless us in Jesus' mighty name. What shall we give unto the Lord? I've shared my own vulnerability with you that I struggle with giving gifts. But I am saying this money. If you struggle giving gifts to a man, don't struggle to give it to God. And what are you going to give? Let's give ourselves to that gift of salvation he has given us. Let's give ourselves to sharing that gift with others. Because I, I believe it's a gift that has given so much to us. So we must learn to share it with others. Of course, let's give ourselves to service. You want to increase, you want to be known, you want, you want people to know that you are committed. Key yourself into service, particularly in the house of God. You will be known and you'll be blessed and you'll be rewarded. During the Sunday school and the announcement, I was just thanking God in my spirit that God, thank you, you have already ministered to us as your people. And of course, we must learn to give sacrifice of praise. Even when you vow, not only will you pay it, but tie your vow to the things God has done and to the things he will do. And the Lord God will bless us as we go in the year in Jesus' name. God bless you. Let us pray. I want you to thank God for the gift of salvation. I want you to thank God maybe for one or two people you have brought that message to. I want you to thank God even for the service you have been able to render in his kingdom. I want you to thank him for him accepting your thanksgiving. I want you to thank God for Jesus' followers, how he has kept us to be one with him. It's not because we are the best church or we are the best theologian in town, but for his mercy, for his loving kindness, for his mercy is a good God unto us. Father, we are grateful. Receive our praises this morning. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, everlasting Father. Thank you, ancient of days. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. I want us to pray that, Father, help me to fulfill my commitment to you. Help me. Help me in the course of this year to be us good service in your kingdom. Help me this year to answer to this great occupation you have called me to, to serve, to serve you, to serve others. Help me, O oh Lord. Help me in the mighty name of Jesus. That as many things that may want to come against me as a form of distraction, Lord, please take them away. I need your help. Glory be to your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. God bless you, sir. God bless you, ma'am.